There's just been a few games that have been blowouts. But other than that, it's been very, very competitive. But my heart and my head are actually very heavy around Hamas and the Israel conflict. Mm. Uh, mm. Speaking to students, speaking mm. to colleagues, faculty members, staff, speaking to my Muslim Arab friends, speaking to my Jewish friends. Uh, and so to tie this to sports, just where are the athletes in this? And I know there are two perspectives, whether college athletes or professional athletes. Um, is it just you just have to be a rare bird or someone who's been educated and you're going to stand on your truth and your values and your faith and you are going to protest and you are not going to stand on the sideline? Or is it something that we're okay. missing we're not we're controlling athletes so much that's all you are is an athlete. You eat, sleep, and drink your sport. Um, you don't get involved in things that are much more important than sports. I'm just kind of I'm just in a place like athletes, why aren't y'all saying anything one way or another? But just get involved. This is this is mm-hmm. true learning right now, what's going on on our college campuses. We're talking to Dr. Deborah Strum. We rock with Distro each and every Thursday. That's a great point. I haven't seen anybody come no. out no. and say anything. Not at all. And Distro, can you summarize real quick, quick, quickly, what is the conflict? Why are people protesting? Can you just give some education on that just a couple yeah. seconds? So on that tragic, terrible, horrendous day, October 7th, when the governing body, quote unquote, of Palestine, Hamas, they decided to attack Israel. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the exact numbers. People are saying 1,200 Israelis died. And they also kidnapped people, right, and took them back to territory that Israel does not occupy, so to speak. Israel, under the leadership of Netanyahu, nicknamed Bibi, said, we are going to retaliate. We want our people who have been kidnapped, and we do not want to be attacked by Hamas. Mm. And so the conflict began. Mm. So there is the side that says, we need to defend Israel. We don't want to be attacked, whether it's one person or thousands of people. Hamas is saying that you are committing genocide against us. We live in a land that is controlled by you in terms of where we can go, Our resources, our water is controlled by Israel, and we're tired of it. Not tired after 30 days. We are tired for decades of this, of this control. So now we have a global um, matter because we fund Israel over $300 billion since since our funding of them. So many argue that Israel cannot do what they do without United States dollars. So that's how it comes back to us. Hmm. People and definitely a lot of young people on college campuses do not want their tax dollars, do not want their university dollars going to support Israel as they uh, battle against Hamas. They don't want it. They want campuses to disinvest. Don't spend any money with companies that do business with Israel. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I mind you, it's not as simple as Muslim Arab versus Jewish. There are Jewish students who also say the same thing. We don't like what Netanyahu is doing. Mm -hmm. There are also people who say that this is something that has to be settled, and it is not right for people to attack Israel because they've been persecuted from day one, right? Mm -hmm. Going back to the the Bible, you know, if you're a believer, um, you know, the Holocaust, all of that. Um, So... You know, I'm not for war. I don't like unnecessary death. Uh, So um, I like to say disruptive peace, you know, that that's a part of who I am. Um, I don't like exploitation. I don't like genocide. Uh, I've been to Israel. Um, I I read a lot about it. I try to listen to people who are of these uh, races, ethnicities, whatever, you know, the culture to try to learn. Um, But I just... I'm a big proponent of young people, especially at this tender age of 17 to 24, to learn, to get involved, <clears throat> to listen, uh, and to stand up for your truth and your voice. And I hate athletes, um, whether it's conscious or unconscious, but being controlled and such that don't get involved, don't pay attention, don't you know, just keep walking, don't don't have anything to say. This this is this is much bigger than you as an athlete. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Well, we're talking with Dr. Deborah yeah. Strobel, wow. saying yeah. we do each Ooh, and every wow. week. I appreciate the uh, clarification because a lot of people probably were maybe a little little fuzzy mm-hmm. on exactly how the conflict started, or, yeah. you know, what was actually taking place. But I think uh, the protests around certain college campuses and and other, you know, around the country now, and the uh, reality is if they're really all just saying, look, the conflict is what it is, you can take whichever side you want, but our, our tax dollars probably shouldn't be a part of it. I probably, you know, I, I probably understand that. So, mm-hmm. so I, you know, because I have a, you know, a, a different affinity for uh, us spending tax dollars outside of the United States. So, that's just my personal opinion. That's just how I, I see things, yeah. especially being a veteran, knowing that not quite enough tax dollars are spent inside the U.S. <laughs> so, before we go spend mm. it somewhere else, you know, let's take care of some of our veterans and some of the other things we need to do. But that's just me. Yeah, and this goes back to the politics of whether or not we should just take care of ourselves, which uh, that is what Donald Trump is a big proponent of. Uh, Others say we can't afford to be an isolationist, right? Because everything that happens around, we are global, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we don't take care of Ukraine, if we don't help Israel, if we don't do X, Y, Z, you know, that eventually this could come back to harm us because of Russia and Putin, because of China. Um, people say we can't afford to be isolationists. We have to take care of our allies, right? I'm not saying you um, can't go to dinner with your friends. I'm just saying you ain't got to always pick up the check. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And we send somewhere around $3 billion a year to Israel. And some would argue, forget $3 billion. How about if you just at kept $1 billion of that home and what we could do for our own country? So there are people who say we just continue to fund and fund Israel um, is this the best use of our dollars? Mm. Um, and there's a big, uh, you know, battle right now with, mm. you know, President Biden, Netanyahu and mm-hmm. China in terms of Netanyahu saying, um, you know, United States, if you don't want to fund us, fine. There's China right there. You know, mm-hmm. they would help. And then, of course, China has taken uh, more of a pro-Palestinian stance. So, I mean, it, it is it's very, very complex. Mm. And, you know, we need our best and our brightest to help to try to figure this out. Some people say we can't figure it out. This is beyond humans. This is a, a God type thing. That's the only thing that's going to um, provide peace in this area. But I know it's just very disturbing. And I, I just want to see athletes more engaged in international national matters besides just kicking a ball, you know, dunking a ball, you know, swimming in the, in the, in the pool, you know, we've got to educate our young people. Um, and not make athletes only seem like, um, as it's been stated, circus performers to entertain them. Mm, that's true, because they're right. big influencers. Yep. All right, Dr. Stroman, right, we Stroman. got a roll. As always, appreciate it. Can't wait to talk to you again. Excellent. Everyone, enjoy.